and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So that, quick, go ahead, now, I was going to say, that's exactly what's happening right now. That's exactly what's happening. What, who the kings of earth? All these other root leaders of these other nations. They're all meeting and, congr and to congregate to see our destruction, man, and, and a new world order. That's what, that's what this whole, that's the plan, man. That's the big plan, man. The NWO, the new world order. That's that's the time we're coming in for them to ignite that, man. So so this place can hurry up and get destroyed, man. They think they're going to they they last with it, but they're going to get caught. They're going to get stopped in their tracks. But all in all, they're still going to try. That's what they're doing right now. That's all. And, and pretty much all that has to happen for this to happen. So it's like, like kind of fitting we are in Exodus. Because this is supposed to be our Exodus. Um, continue with that, brother, 29. So Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was yep. in the dunk in the dunk uh dun dun dungeons a lot. All right, so he took out all the firstborns. So it, it got to that point, it got so serious with, with Pharaoh and the Most High and him hardening his heart that he had to take out his children. Now, you're you going to continue on that one, please. And all the firstborn of the cattle, and, Mo, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Okay, so... In every house of the Egyptians, it was, a, it was the firstborn was dead. And what does he tell them to do right after this? And he called Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, but both ye and your children and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. So that was that was enough for Pharaoh right there. Like you took the kids, you did all this. All right, you know all that other stuff was, was minor, but like now you guys gotta go. So it took that for him to let us go, and then. As we're doing that, and we when we start jumping to actually jump to chapter 14, he still starts chasing after us. So, um, and I just wanted to grab that real quick. Continue where you was at. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we be all dead men. Okay, so give me Exodus 14 and 8. So yeah, so he, so he, he's pretty much like, yo, look, they, we're all gonna be dead if we keep messing around with these people, because obviously their, their, their power is not playing with us. I mean, they didn't get it the first couple of times, but they got it right then and there. Took so, the ten plagues, as that brother just pointed out. Oh, it's a big. Yeah. Oh, you want me to read? Yeah, eight, all right. Um, yeah, fourteen and eight. The book of Exodus, chapter fourteen, verse eight. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. So he just let us go, and then the Most High still, still hardened his heart, for he started chasing after us. Now, we, as we all know, when they chased after us, they, the, the Most High parted the Red Sea, and, and, and when he parted the Red Sea, they ran through the Red Sea, Red sea and they chased us, and they, and they, they got swallowed up in the sea. Um, but I wanted that brother to get Habakkuk for me in a moment, but can you continue, please? Just to get to that point. Um, verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in a camping by the sea beside Baha Harav before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Now, I'm just going to say this, like, again, that's just to give you more of, a, of, a, uh, of, of an example of how it's going to be. They're going to pursue us. It's going to, like, it's going to be like X-Men, um, the last X-Men movie, where they, they hunted out um, um, all the mutants. It's going to be like that. So they they not gonna stop. They're gonna continue. Their their heart gonna be hard and they're gonna continue trying to fuck with us in them days. 
They won't try to get us. Some of us might get caught. Some of us might not. Hold on. Just Lord willing, be we be all right. Continue. Oh. Uh. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? And, and yeah, our people still, we, we think it's some type of trick. You done seen all this stuff happen for your sake, and yeah, you think it's some type of trick. You think we on some bullshit. We think you telling you, you telling, we telling you to do this stuff, or have you do this so we can kill you or have you die. When in reality, this is all for your benefit and for, and for you to be um, glorified with, with Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Um, the Lord shall fight, oh, slag it. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. Oh, I think I didn't read 12. Yeah, I'm at verse 12, it's locked in. Is not this the word that we did tell thee? That's, that's, that's jump to 16. Jump to 16? Yeah. Uh, 14, verse 16. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Okay, and then go ahead. And, uh, so right now, Moses is, is, is splitting the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. So pretty much right there, they're, they're, they're going into the sea. It's about to be destruction for Pharaoh because of his pride. And I just wanted to get Habakkuk from with me. This is Habakkuk chapter 2. Start at what? Start at what? Chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch and see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I, am, when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because no, so I just want to say, so, so it's saying, though it tarry, wait for it, and it shall speak, and it shall not lie. So all the stuff that we're telling you right now is just like what Moses was telling them. This is just us for, for us to get our milk and honey. This is for us to have our, our own land, enjoy our children, and all these things. All this stuff has to happen for that to occur. Go ahead. For, uh, for though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So right then and there, the just shall live by his faith. So, you know, when when, when there's this famine and these martial laws and these, and these enchantments and all these things that happen to us come upon us during these times, we still gotta have faith. And although, although the, um, the children of Israel aren't displaying faith right then and there because they thought they were just brought into the wilderness to be killed, you gotta display faith. You gotta just believe that, that the Most High is going to do something better for you, and He's going to bring He's, he's going to bring us out of this nonsense. Because at the end of the day, we not we wasn't put here because He felt like just putting us here. We was put here put here because we fucked up. But He still had mercy on us. So at the end of the day, we gotta have faith in Him that that mercy is going to be shown toward us. Um, now that's Lord willing to be the men. What you have said, brother? No, I got this. <clears throat> this is the Book of Galatians, chapter five, verse five. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. By faith. By faith. Okay, so we, so through the Spirit, we hope we, we through the hope of righteousness um, for, by faith. So everything is going to be faith-based. So as they call us faith-based Israelites, that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, you got faith that you want to go get a job. You got faith that you want to get that girl. You got faith in everything but what the Most High got for you. And our people got to start having faith because at the end of the day, when it, when it comes, when when it comes, you ain't going to be ready for it. You don't have no faith. It is what it is. So just you know, pray on that, meditate that, meditate on that. That's for the Akim out there. Um, other than that, I'm gonna pass it on to the next brother. Matthew 7 and 13. <clears throat> and give me 1 John 2 and 13. Okay. 
Nosotros somos los hebreos israelitas viniendo cada semana para traerle el verdadero evangelio del Señor Todopoderoso, quien ustedes llaman Dios y su Hijo, llama, quien ustedes llaman Jesucristo, quien su verdadero nombre es Yahweh Queremos darle toda gloria a, a, a Yahweh Yahweh doble honor a los ancianos apóstoles de GMS y a los, uh, y a los restos hermanos de la casa de David regados por las cuatro esquinas del mundo empujando la palabra del Señor en sinceridad y en honestidad queremos darle queremos traerle el mensaje para que ustedes puedan salvar su, uh, su espíritu para cuando el día del Señor venga cuando Él venga con todas sus glorias cuando Él venga con los misiles nucleares ¿Verdad? Ustedes no puedan decir que, que, no fueron, uh, uh, que no les llamaron la atención de sus malos hechos y cómo ustedes pueden salva, uh, ser salvados en, en, uh, cuando venga Jesucristo la segunda vez. Porque cuando Jesucristo venga, Él no viene a, a bailar, Él no viene a cantar, Él no viene a dar abrazos ni besos. Él viene con una espada para acabar con este reino, para que el reino de los cielos uh, sea construido, para que el reino de los cielos sea estabilizado en, en la tierra para siempre, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Amén. Jesucristo viene pronto, hermana. Amén. Cuando Jesucristo venga, no pueden decir que ustedes no, no escucharon la palabra de los profetas y, y, y cómo ustedes pueden cambiar su manera de ser, su manera malvadas, su manera desgraciadas, que lo tienen destruidos. Cuando Jesucristo venga, los homosexuales no pueden decir que no fueron uh, uh, enseñados cómo, cómo cambiar su manera de ser. Los, lo, los que uh, uh, alaban a falsos dioses, los adulterios, no pueden decir que no fueron uh, enseñados ni, ni, uh, ni, ni le llamaron la atención. ¿Cómo pueden uh, volver a llegar al, al, uh, al convenio que el Señor hizo con nosotros cuando, él, uh, uh, cuando lo crucificaron a Él en la cruz? Para darnos a nosotros uh, una segun, un segundo chance para poder uh, buscar la salvación y no tener que morir la segunda muerte, que será la muerte por fuego. Pero todo depende en qué ustedes ponen su fe. Todo depende a dónde ustedes guardan sus tesoros. ¿Ustedes quieren seguir prosperando en esta tierra? ¿O quieren hacerle trabajo para poder recibir sus, uh, su recompensa en el reino de los cielos? ¿Van a seguir siendo carnal? ¿O van, o van, a, uh, van, a, van a dedicarse a ser espiritual? Ustedes deciden. Matthew 7 and 13. San, Ma San Mateo, capítulo 7 y 13. Entren por la puerta angosta, porque la puerta y el camino que lleven a la protección. Entren por la puerta angosto porque la puerta y el camino que lleven a la perdición son anchos y espaciosos y muchos entran por ellos. That's right. Entren, uh, uh, la, la puerta ancha los van a lle llevar a la destrucción. Y la mayoría de la gente, lo que tienen uh, metido en la cabeza, uh, es lo que nos enseñan desde, desde cuando somos pequeños. Que tenemos que uh, cumplir con el grado 1 a 12, después ir a la universidad, después trabajar por un pendejo, 8 horas diario como esclavos, para hacer una vida en, este, en, esta, en esta tierra malvada creyendo que van a llegar a 70, 80 años, cuando ni siquiera sabes que la Tercera Guerra Mundial ya ha comenzado. Pero la puerta y el camino que lleven a la vía son angostos y difíciles y pocos las encuentran. 
y pocos la encuentran. Es difícil entrar por la, por la puerta donde, donde, donde pocos van a caminar. Es, es difícil caminar el camino que deben de caminar. Es lo más difícil en el mundo. Give me Matthew 6 and 19. Babo Kashar. Los más difíciles del mundo es ser un verdadero hombre del Señor uh, a su mejor habilidad, uh, guardando los mandamientos y las leyes del Señor en el corazón y ensañando, ensayando, uh, ensayando estas leyes y, uh, y, y uh, damn, how do I say? Never mind. Ensayando las leyes que lo van a llevar a la vida. Es lo más difícil del mundo mientras tenemos esos demonios llevándonos al mal camino. Esos demonios, uh, esos demonios uh, uh, influyendo a, influyéndonos a nosotros a dejar las maneras del Señor. Es lo más difícil del mundo tratar de hacer lo correcto mientras todo el mundo aplauda y humilla uh, ser insincero, ser malvado. Ser impuro. Ser impio. Es fácil acostarse con una mujer de otro hombre. Es fácil engañar a su hermano. Es fácil... A, a...